Hey, welcome. We've been talking through how to deal with projectile problems for physics and for AP physics classes, and today I want to go over how to solve for the final velocity of a projectile, like this velocity over here. How would you go about solving for that, and how would you get the angle with reference to, say, the vertical axis? There are lots of problems that you'll see that'll end up this way, and so it is an important skill in a two-dimensional kinematics unit. So let's go ahead and get to it. So first, the problem that we have says a person standing on the edge of a cliff kicks a stone horizontally at 3.33 meters per second. The cliff is 37 meters above the surface of the water. And question one says, how long does it take the stone to hit the water? Now, this is just setting up the problem. We really want to focus on two and three, and we will. I'm going to show you how to do it, but if you need extra help in understanding how to do a horizontally launched projectile problem, or you haven't done one before, then take a look at my lesson in the upper right right about now if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, I want to look more closely at this vector, just like I would break this up into components if it was an initial vector. We're going to start thinking about this in terms of breaking it up into its vectors because these components are related, but they are not the same. And so this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, you could say. And we want to solve for the V final and the Y, V final and the X. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, let's work the basic projectile problem. So let's take a look at that. So number one says, how long does it take the stone to hit the water? So what we're going to do is start with this equation here in the X, and we'll do this in the Y as well. And when we start this in the X, you should start thinking to yourself, all right, what is zero? So what do you think is zero in this problem? Hopefully you've been able to come up with the acceleration in the X is going to be zero. And that's true for almost all of these problems that you'll see in a regular or an honors, and even an AP physics class as well, as you're building up to deal with drag forces later in a AP Physics C course, like there would be air resistance in more difficult problems much farther down the line. But for now, for most of what we're doing, the problem will say something like neglect air resistance, or we'll give you the idea that air resistance is not a factor, or they'll say nothing about it at all, and you'll just have to assume that, yes, your acceleration in the X is zero. So if that's zero, the whole term here drops out, and you're left with this part of the equation, but you can quickly notice that we don't know our delta x and we don't know our time, which means we have two unknowns. And this is common in projectile problems. You work in the x-axis with this equation, a lot of times you're gonna have two unknowns, you're stuck, and that's okay, you just move on to the y-axis. Use the same equation here, and again, I have the same question for you. What do you think is going to be zero in this problem here? All right, well, hopefully you've been able to come up with the idea that your V initial in the Y is going to be zero here because this stone is kicked completely horizontally. It has no component in the Y axis over here or over here, like upwards or downwards, that kind of thing. So this is zero, and that means that whole term drops out. And we can simplify the equation here. I'm going to label it as equation one as I go to my next slide. And so that is still our equation one that we're dealing with. And if we look at this, we got to work with some algebra. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, but we want to isolate for t. So what we're going to do is get rid of the 1 half and the acceleration of the y. To do that, I have to multiply by the reciprocal. And that's what I'm doing right here. In other words, to get rid of a 1 half, I'd multiply by a 2. To get rid of the acceleration of the y, I'd divide by acceleration of the y. Do the same thing on the left-hand side, and I am left with this. And I just need to take the square root of both sides to solve for time. Now I'm ready to plug in my numbers. I go ahead and do that. And that's the time that it takes for this stone to hit the water. All right, so that's the setup, the initial part of this projectile problem. Now let's get to where we need to be in terms of understanding how to come up with the final speed at which the stone hits the water. So let's go ahead and do that. So we could say we need to work in the x and the y once again, but now we need to work with a different equation because we need an equation that will tell us v final, right? And that other equation that we use does not have v final in it whatsoever. So if you look at your list of equations that you probably have from your teacher or instructor, this is the one that's going to make the most sense here. So we go ahead and start with this thinking in the x-axis. And again, I'm going to ask you what is zero at this point? Well, hopefully you've been able to spot that your acceleration in the x is zero. And so if that's the case, that whole term drops out. And so it turns out that your v final in the x is equal to your v initial in the x. We were already given our v initial in the x. So we're going to go ahead and just write down our v final in the x 
is the same as our v initial in the x. Then what we're going to do is use the same equation and work it in the y-axis. So now we can think about, again, is there anything that is zero in this equation? So what do you think? Well, the answer is yes, there is something that's zero, and that's our v initial in the y. Again, it's not launched at an angle this way or that way. Another way to think about that is if I were to ask you to make a right triangle out of this vector right here, when it's already in the x-axis, you would be thrown off by that. There would be no way to do it. There's no way to turn this arrow into a right triangle if it's already in the x-axis. So because of that, your v initial in the y is zero. And we can continue with the problem, simplify it, and at this point we're ready to plug in our values and we can solve for our v final in the y. Now I want to ask you, all right, if we know our v final in the y and we know our v final in the x, how could I solve for the hypotenuse of a right triangle here? What do you think? Well, hopefully you can come up with the idea that we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem here. And so that is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b are the legs of the triangle over here and over here, and c represents the hypotenuse. So we're going to go ahead and sub in specifically what these things mean. And then we are going to think to ourselves, all right, this is our unknown. So it's already isolated, mostly. We're going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And now we're ready to plug in our numbers at the ends. If we do that, we end up with this answer here. I do want to point out that this is very close to this, and that is maybe going to throw you off a little bit, but it does work out. In other words, this should be actually drawn nine times longer than this vector over here. I just don't have enough room to be able to do that on the screen itself. So v final in the y is truly close to v final in terms of the vector length. All right, and lastly, what you need to know how to do is to be able to solve for the angle, and usually they will give you a reference line. So the reference is going to be, in this case, the vertical axis. So which axis is the vertical axis? Well, it turns out your vertical axis is the up and down axis, right? If you have trouble remembering that, think of the word horizon, and that's where the sky meets the land off in the distance. And so the horizontal is going to be in that plane, the same as where the sky meets the land. Vertical must be the opposite of that. So verticals up and down, and that's our reference. So which angle are we talking about? Are we talking about this angle as compared to the vertical, or this angle right here as compared to the vertical? All right, well, hopefully you can see that it needs to be this angle over here that we're going to be working with. So we go ahead, and we can use any trig function at this point, any simple trig function I would recommend, because we know all three legs of the right triangle. So I'm just going to start with sine and say the sine of any angle is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. And we actually want the angle, we don't want the sine of the angle. So what we're going to do is first we'll go ahead and sub in what our specific legs are. And then I want you to think to yourself, because we want the angle, we want to get rid of the sine function. To get rid of the sine function, we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides, and that's going to cancel out this inverse sine and sine function over here, and you're going to be left with theta, which is what we want, is equal to the inverse sine of v final and the x over v final. If you're thrown off by that, just think to yourself, they are inverse operations. Like if you think of sine as like wrapping the present or something, then inverse sine would be unwrapping the present, so to speak. And so we can do this mathematically. We're ready to go ahead, plug in our numbers, and solve for unknown. So that's how you would go about doing one of these style problems. And I've done lessons throughout the entire year of physics, of, of key lessons that folks will need to know to be able to do well in physics or as a basis for AP Physics classes. So hopefully that's been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.